Okay, so user management in Zahara is to be found from admin and then settings. And when you come down here, you've effectively got three or four different sections. The first thing you've got is the ability to create a user. So you can create a user here, first name, last name, email address, most important things. Uh, and then the process is pretty much add the user, assign them to a division, and manage their permissions. However, we do have a new user wizard here. So if you click on this and we say, right, the first name is Gary and the last name is Davis and we'll put uh, GD. That's, in fact, I'm gonna change that to, click to scan.co.uk. Uh, phone number, leave those blank and go on to next. Now with the wizards, you can choose what they're gonna be a member of. So if I make them a member of my Edge Technologies marketing department and the finance department, and I click next, roles. So in Zahara, we have different types of roles. So we've got finance, approver, buyer, receiver, admin. So I'm gonna select all of them um, next. And then we have permissions. So on an individual basis, you can choose what the user can see. So again, I'm gonna give them access to everything. So they're gonna be, everything's ticked. And I click, uh, I click done and yes to create the user. So that user is now created. So if we have a look down here, we called him Gary Davis. If I wanted to go in and edit anything and say, the only thing you can't do is delete business settings, then I could update that. If we go back to admin, and settings if we're if we're managing users if I was to expand out say click to scan limited and HQ I've got all of these different um, users belonging to the HQ division of click to scan and I've got a couple of toggles so I could toggle everything on or off um, and I could toggle a whole row on and off as well so we've got these kind of um, buttons at the bottom here so if I wanted to take the admin permission away from absolutely everybody I could just click it at the bottom there so once I've made my changes I just click update and those changes are saved now there's a couple of warnings here so if you create a user manually using this section here and you don't apply them to a division you will get a warning so we have one user um, that isn't assigned to a division so they won't be able to log in and we've got 10 users assigned to a division with no roles so somewhere in this kind of lot here will be some users um, without any kind of um, ticks against them so uh, so the warnings down here are quite useful and it's important for you to kind of manage your users otherwise they won't be able to log in properly the, the other thing we have with the users is the ability to import them so if you wanted to import all of your users in one go, you can download a template, pop the template up and populate it. So for example, here we've got first name, last name, email, job title, AD is active directory user. Basically it's a blank field at the moment. We might use it in the future, but if you wanted to put their active directory name in there, um, then that's absolutely fine. And the telephone number field is useful if you want to put that value into a template or an email that you're generating automatically from the back end of Zahara. So this is where you can then populate your spreadsheet uh, or sorry, your CSV file, browse to it, upload it. Um, and then you can bulk import your users. If you do that, they will sit here and you will then have to go through and you can say, right, Jeremy, I want them to be members of Edge Technologies IT department, click add, and it will push them all over. Um, so managing users, just remember, it's kind of effectively three steps, get the users in, ap apply them to a division, and then set their roles inside the divisions down here. Um, but our recommendation is to use the user wizard up here because it's much easier. Okay, so a few more tools we've got around users are these. You can go select all and you can do a group password reset. So everyone that I've selected here, or if I custom select, click the password reset and that will that will batch send out an email to everybody who, who you've got ticked against and telling them to, to reset their password. If you go into an individual user, so like Sean Audley, um, and we want to make them a tenancy admin, just tick the tenancy admin box there. So 
a tenancy admin will get this admin menu effectively they can get to the settings to be able to create business units to be able to uh, administer the users if you're not a tenancy admin you can't administer the users so that's quite important so make sure that you don't untick that if you are a tenancy admin you need to have that ticked against your name one other thing worth showing you is something called restricted viewing so if you tick this this effectively means that the user can only see their stuff that's really important so you could have so you could have five or six members of the marketing department but you might only want them to see their own purchases you might not want them to see their colleagues purchases as well so restricted viewing locks them down to only see their stuff um, so I hope that is effectively it when it comes to users although of course we do actually encourage you to have as many users as you possibly can um, and you can see how many users you've got in the maximum user count that's listed up here. So if you've got a site license, it will say unlimited. If you've got restricted uh, or designated number like 10 or 50, it will tell you here on the maximum users. So there we go. Thanks for watching. I hope that's been useful.